things have become almost unbearable for me. And for my family. Nothing has helped. I guess that's why I'm here. So, um, if I just talk about my troubles, you'll be able to use it later to help with the procedure? Seems hard. Welcome to Neuroprober Training. I am pleased to be your guide. When I'm speaking, you can always make a left trigger press motion to skip the instruction. Whether you are speaking with the client directly or neuroprobing within their mind, it is always imperative to listen. You'll find that every detail of the subconscious is trying to tell its story. In the case of our clients, it's often the forgotten story of the trauma they experienced. Some parts of the patient's memory may have become confused or corrupted by the conscious mind's attempts to reconcile or cover up the truth of what happened to them. However, if you look closely and carefully in the right places, you will find that the truth will ultimately show. While neural probing, you will encounter objects that look like photographs. This is how your consciousness interprets the concrete memory moments it finds within the client's psyche. Typically, there are about 10 of these memory photos found in each psyche. The mind can hold on to... When you acknowledge a memory photo, it will surface more prominently in the client's psyche and at that point can be found in a safe area of the mind, often where you begin within the client's mind. When you have found all 10 photos, you must put five of the memories that actually represent the trauma in the proper order. Doing so will, at last, fully release the memory to the client's conscious mind. While neural probing, you will encounter objects that look like photographs. This is how your consciousness and the most important thing you do as a neural prober is find and acknowledge these photos. However, this is easier said than done. While some photos are freely available in the subconscious, Others are buried deeply within and will need to be coaxed out. Interacting with one part of the mind can sometimes open up new areas of the psyche. Some things, like these doors, can change their state in response to actions taken elsewhere. The subconscious doesn't take kindly to intruders and will take every opportunity to feed off of any sensations of anxiety or tension you offer to it. If you can, try to stay calm and peaceful, even in the face of terror. If you can calm yourself, you'll find the subconscious will calm itself too. Here is an example of an especially buried memory. Some details of a given trauma can be especially tenacious, but by gently and cleverly listening to the clues the mind gives you, you will find all you need to work through it. Just think of it as a puzzle for you to solve. When you focus on these puzzles, make a left trigger motion if you need to break your concentration. While neuroprobing, your consciousness is lost deep inside the subconscious mind of the client. While this is a journey that you must make alone, we at the Neurostalgia Institute take the safety of our neuroprobers very seriously. If you need to access any of your neuroprober tools or pull your consciousness free, press your finger where a start button might be. This will bring up your neuroprober tools and you can proceed as needed. Do you remember when I mentioned that the client's subconsciousness can feed off of your fear? Some especially vulnerable areas can be very sensitive and dangerous. When you place your consciousness in another's subconsciousness, there is a risk of you getting hurt.
of the pain and turmoil of the client's subconscious drawing your own mind into its agony. You must be brave in these areas despite the risk. You must stay calm. Should you let your fears get the best of you, it will be incredibly difficult to proceed unharmed. When your consciousness is in another's subconsciousness, your psyches will inevitably intermingle. Just as the client's mind can affect you, you will see parts of yourself reflected in the mind of the client. Tread lightly and tread carefully. At Neurostalgia, we take great measures to ensure our neuroprober's safety as best we can. However, you are about to proceed through a highly dangerous area that you must face alone. If the client's subconscious becomes too volatile, you will be automatically removed from this area of the mind and taken to a safer area of the mind. Use this as an opportunity to collect yourself. When you're ready, you will be able to easily return to where you left off to battle the darkness and chaos that has taken root in the client's subconscious.
Oh my God! It's all rushing back to me. It's so awful and I don't want to remember, but yes, I now know the face of my demon. My sister and I, we were taken out into the woods by my stepmother for one of her nighttime walks. We'd usually find our way back by leaving a trail of whatever we could grab before the walk. Uh, marbles, pieces of paper, even pebbles. However, one night, she took us deep, deep into the woods. We brought some bread to leave a trail of crumbs, but all the forest creatures must have eaten them. We were lost, so lost. We tried to find our way back, but it was so dark, and we were in a very strange part of the woods. We were lost for days, hungry and tired. We finally found a house and were so hopeful that someone might be able to help us. That house, though, that house was no ordinary house. It looked like candy, and there was something off about it. We shouldn't have gone in, but... We did. It was a prison for lost children like us. There was a woman in the house who would fatten her prisoners up and try to eat them, and that was going to be our fate. I was first. She tricked me into getting close to the oven, and before I knew it, I was inside. If it weren't for my clever sister Gretel pulling me out in time, I would have been burned alive. We escaped that house and found our way home. After that, things started to get better. Our awful stepmother passed away and my family came into some wealth. I guess... I guess we just forgot about those events. I, I mean, how could you live with those images and memories inside your mind? But then again, they were always there. The old woman still torturing us beyond memory, beyond time. However, I can now confront my past, confront this trauma. Thank you. It is better to know than not to know.